Brothers and sisters, God is good. God is good. And all the time. Did Ohio State win? Did they win? Okay, God is good, even Ohio State won. <laughs> we give glory to God for this beautiful day, this wonderful day. The sun is really gorgeous. Every one of you is smiling. Thank you, Lord. The kids are happy to be here. We thank Lord for that. Now, some of you, you've been to Capitol Hill, the United States Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C. When I talk about Capitol Hill, you should know what I'm talking about. I've been there. When you go to the U.S. Supreme Court, when you, you know, climb those staircases, the big oak tree doors on the Supreme Court uh, building, what do you see right below? The Ten Commandments. Have you seen that? Hey, you guys, you're going to go to Capitol Hill. This is history. This is America. You've got to know these things. The Ten Commandments are on the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Now, when you get into the court itself, where the Chief Justice sits, right above him, there is a picture of Moses with the tablets of the Ten Commandments. That is homework for you. You've got to go and check it out. James Madison, the fourth president of the United States, this is what he said. We stake this nation, our political, social, economic life of America according to the commandments of God. That was James Madison. Patrick Henry, he was a statesman. Continental Congressman, the first governor of Virginia. This is what he said. This nation, America, was not found by religionists, but by Christians. Not found by religion, but by the holy gospel of Jesus Christ. These are not my words, brothers and sisters. I just happen to love America, and I know them. When America was fighting for their independence, Patrick Henry himself, he stood, he gathered a whole lot of Americans at St. John Episcopal Church, big crowd. And he said this, I do not know about the course what other people might take, but I, Patrick Henry, I said to you, the colonists, you either give me liberty or you give me death. Folks, why am I telling you this? These men, they said what they said because they were convinced they had God in everything that they did and in everything that they said. And because they trusted in God, you and I are the beneficiary of this beautiful United States of America. When Madison said this, when Patrick Henry said this, and all other forefathers said what they said, they said because they knew there will be that little boy, that son called Peter Clever, called PC, from all miles away from Africa, he will come and enjoy the beauty of the United States of America. I applaud those men. If you don't understand what those men did, you cannot even understand the lives of the saints. You won't even understand the church in heaven. Those men, they had the spirit of God to do what they did. Why? Because God always gave them the light, gave them the truth to know that stretching all the way from the east coast, from Boston, from the islands of Nantucket, all the west coast, down to Louisiana, north of the Dakota, that will be the United States of America. They did that because they sought the light of Christ. To them, Christ was truth. And they always they shouted out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on America. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on our justice system. Jesus, son of Mary, have mercy 
on our families, our children, and on our children, children. Folks, every time when I hear that statement, separation of church and state, I'm like, that is bogus. That is totally bogus. And it's not where. Even if you read anywhere in the U.S. Constitution, it's nowhere. Somebody just misread the First Amendment of the Bill of Rights. The First Amendment says, Congress should not enact laws that support or prohibit any religion. However, every America has the freedom and the right to, to, uh, to practice religion. That's it. There is nowhere it says separation of church and state. Somebody just made up something and he made us believe that it is true. It's nowhere. I guarantee you, when we put God first in everything that we do, if we call on the name of Jesus, we'll be blessed. You be the judge. Where are we? Is God in America or is somebody trying to take God away? Is God in your families or try, somebody's trying to rip God away from your families? Is God within your children and your great-grandchildren and your grandchildren or somebody's trying to take that one away from you? Is God in our businesses or some people are trying to take God away and they think it's all about money? Two weeks ago, I stood here and I said, People who are trafficking human beings, human trafficking, you remember? Those are the men and women who don't care about the future of America. They don't care about the future of our children. They don't care about, the, they don't care about God. They only care about money. Because money is their God. They have no light. They are blind. This week, on Tuesday, what happened? The former CEO of Abakambi and Fitch has been indicted on cases of sex trafficking. Matt Jeffries. You know Abakambi and Fitch? It's right here in New Albany. These, are not, these things are happening. The so-called billionaires, they are feasting on your innocent children, sons and daughters. You pay a lot of money to raise, to take these kids to colleges and universities that they can get an education. And they go to put in the application and somebody just goes for their behind. Sad. Very sad. That happens when Christ and God is taken out of everything. The man we just heard in the gospel, but mayors. He sees Jesus. He knew that Jesus would save him. And he calls him out. He's like, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Because he knew the only way he's going to have the sight of his mind and of his eyes and of his everything is to accept Jesus in his life. If it happened to this blind man, it can also happen to you and to me and to America and to everybody. You take God, you take Christ out of our lives, we are left with the works of the devil. You're seeing it, it's happening in the world, it's in your backyards, it's happening into our kids' neighborhoods, and now neighborhoods have changed for the kids. Their neighborhoods is the cell phone. Bad guys will get them on their cell phones, in their bedrooms. Parents, we need to watch out. We need to be enlightened. This is what the gospel is telling us. Receive the light. When Bartimaeus, when Jesus heals this man, he, yes, he may be talking about the physical eyes, but he's also talking about a physical mindfulness. To be attentive of what is going on. Because remember, the devil was defeated, but never destroyed. Jesus defeated the devil, but the devil was never destroyed. He's roaming around rolling like a lion waiting for somebody to devour. You're supposed to be within the confines of the church and being attentive because God has given you free will. The moment you jump out, the devil got you. Baba. And you lament. Be open. Be open. Know what is going on. Number two. Life of testifying to God 
is not easy. To be a Christian, it's not easy. To say that I'm going to stand up for God, it is not easy. You'll be rebuked. You'll be scolded. They'll point fingers at you for identifying yourself as a Christian, as a Catholic. This is what happened to this man. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. Folks, they will silence you if you identify yourself as Christian, as Catholic. You will be called in the HR's office. You lose your job. I know one time I, I, went to anoint, uh, I went to anoint somebody and I found this little boy, this you know, young man, he was in his 20s. He had to leave his job because his bosses were telling him to be fraudulent, to rip off somebody, some customer. This boy, he walked away. He said, no, my conscience is not clean. I guarantee that boy that God will reward him in this life and the world to come. You have to stand up for the truth. Sooner or later, we're going for the elections. You have to stand up for the truth. What is truth to you? You have to stand up. You'll be scolded for identifying yourself as a child of God. It's not easy. You'll be fired. They'll point fingers at you. They will sue you for practicing your religious freedom and for saying that, yes, you are a Catholic. It's tough. I want to end with what this man did when Jesus healed him. Jesus told him, go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed him on the way. Fox, let me tell you, one of the reasons why churches are, are closing in the Western world, in America, and in our dioceses here, it's because we've not done enough as Catholics. We've not lived to our missionary work as Catholics. Every year, New Year's, I hear different resolutions. Some people say, I want to cut 20 pounds. I want to go places. I want to do this. People make resolutions. Let me tell you, if you can make a resolution to bring one person back to the church, only one, only one, I guarantee you, either we have to break this building and build a new church, or we have to have two masses on Saturday. It, will, it can happen. This man, when he got healed, he decided to follow Jesus. You and I, we call ourselves Christians and Catholics. Why? Because we follow Jesus. That's what has brought you here. You didn't come here to smoke cigars. No. You came here because you love Jesus Christ. If you had come here and I see you popping bottles of champagne, I'll be like, oh girl, oh boy, you're in the wrong place. But you are here because you follow Jesus. You love Jesus. But also in following and loving Jesus involves also bringing a sister, bringing a brother, a fallen away, somebody who has been unchurched, back to church. And I guarantee you, if any one of you can bring somebody back to church, wow, it will be amazing. Following Jesus, Christianity and missionary work is part of us. Oftentimes when I go to Laking Memorial or any other hospital, Riverside or Mount Camo, to anoint somebody, when I step out of that room, I engage myself to say hello to the nurses. Greet them. Smile at them. Ask them, hey, nurses, what can I pray for you? Some of them, they tell me, Father, pray for my marriage. Others will tell me, Father, pray that I win a lottery. I don't want to work here. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but all in all, I engage in them. I pray for them. When you go to the restaurant to eat with your family, when somebody brings the menu, tell them, thank you for serving us. How can we pray for you? We are getting ready to pray for our food. What can we pray for? Same thing. You go to work in the cafeteria. You are sitting with your fellow co-workers. Before you eat, be the first one to lead a prayer for giving thanks for the food you're going to eat. And the rest will follow suit. Stand out. That's what it means to be Christian. That's what it means to be Catholic. 
You know a friend who is falling away. He was Catholic, she was Catholic, no more. You know them? Bring them back. You know somebody who's gone through a tough time. Talk to them. Don't start by te teaching them all the dogmas of the Catholic Church. No, no, no. 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 Start by, you know, you know, visiting them. Let them visit you. Go out for dinners. Go watch a movie. You know, greet them. Say what is happening. Be like you're trying to date this person. You ask these married women, all the married women who are here, rem you remember that man you were seated with, your husband? Did she tell you on day one, oh, I want to marry you, I want to marry you on day one? If, she, if he had said that to you, you probably would have kicked him. But he started by saying, hello, good morning, next time can I have your number? You know, can you visit me? Can we go for a tour? Can we go for vacation? Blah, 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 one, two, three months, one year. And then all of a sudden, when that man took a knee, will you marry me? You're like, yes. <laughs> Why? Why? Because you had all the confidence. You're like, this is the right man. It didn't happen from one night. It's the same thing also when we are trying to bring our brothers and sisters back to church. Do not give them the hard teachings of the church. Food is good. But when you go to the hospital and come out, with a baby for one week, you don't stop by McDonald's and, you know, get, get a big mark and give it to your baby. Yes, food is good, but, you know, baby steps, baby steps, baby step. Start by being good to that person, okay? Let that person build that confidence within you, and then slowly but sure you can begin talking about the truth. Brothers and sisters, that's what it means to follow Jesus Christ. So, let us remember that God is key in everything that we do. And let me tell you, when I read our forefathers, I'm like, man, these men, they got it. No wonder that's why I'm enjoying America the way I do. Because these men knew without the light of God, they will be blind. Without the light of God, they won't have the knowledge. Because they believed in God. They trusted in God. America got independence. America is America. A superpower in the world. Whether you like it or not, America is the test of heaven. If you don't test it here, heaven, you won't test it. Because this country was built on scripture. And on the word of God, America will be. Amen? Amen.